St. Martin, a tropical paradise surrounded by the blissful waters of the Caribbean Sea and a constituent country of the Kingdom of the Netherlands. That's right, this gorgeous piece of land is actually ruled by the Dutch King. How this came to be and what this country is all about, we'll discuss in the next few minutes. Hello and welcome to 7 Facts. Sharing the island with the French collectivity of Saint Martin, this country is indeed an integral part of a European kingdom. This small community of 41,000 lives in an equally small area of 34 square kilometers. But, as you might have guessed, St. Martin is incredibly popular among tourists and so, you'll find a hell of a lot more people all year round. The beaches are great, the nightlife is vibrant, the cuisine is delicious and the casinos are plentiful. But St. Martin is much more than just a tourist destination. So let's dig a little deeper and see what else we can find. Let's start with the history. The first humans to settle on this island arrived some 4,000 years ago, maybe even earlier. Yes, that's right, St. Martin received its first humans right around the time the Egyptians started to build pyramids. But unfortunately, there's little we know about those folks. The earliest identified group were the Arawak Amerindians followed by the Caribs. I could dedicate an entire series to this part of Caribbean history and who knows, maybe I will, but for now, let's just find out how St. Martin came under European rule. The Spanish, the French, the British and the Dutch all wanted a piece of this land. The Dutch in particular wanted this island for convenience. The island lied halfway between the colony of New Amsterdam that later became New York and New Holland, also known as Dutch Brazil. The Spanish didn't like that and took over, then abandoned the place. So the Dutch and the French came back and started to bicker about the borders. Of course, during all these years, the native population declined rapidly, mostly due to diseases introduced by Europeans. Neither the Dutch nor the French wanted to yield the island, so they agreed to share it. But even with an agreement in place, things didn't go as planned. Between 1648 and 1816, this tiny border on this tiny island changed 16 times. And while this was going on, plantations popped up all over the island and to work those fields, African slaves were brought in. But the Dutch messed things up a bit, because now they were way outnumbered by their slaves and could no longer ignore their demands. So the local landowners actually had to free their African slaves almost 15 years before the Dutch officially abolished slavery. And that's the short version of St. Martin's European history. The capital of St. Martin is the town of Philipsburg. The town was established by Captain John Phillips, a Scottish commander in the Dutch Navy. It originated on a narrow strip of land with the sea on one side and a salt lake on the other, the Great Bay Salt Lake. Here the salt extracted from the lake could easily be loaded onto ships for onward transport on the Caribbean Sea. While this is today the commercial and political center of the country, the town itself is tiny. Less than 2,000 people live here. Its promenades and commercial streets are filled to the brim with lovely shops and bars and the town itself parallels long sandy beaches. Whether you arrive on a cruise ship or by a plane, Philipsburg will be your first contact with this wonderful island. Speaking of airplanes, have you ever seen this? The internet is full of these videos with people lying dangerously close to a landing plane. Those videos were all taken at the Princess Juliana International Airport in Philipsburg. Arriving aircrafts have to fly very low over the now famous Maho Beach, which makes it the perfect location for plane spotters. When airplanes take off, the jet blast swooshes the beach and many onlookers get close to the airport's fences. But while this looks like a lot of fun, be mindful, this is actually very dangerous to do, as one woman in 2017 found out. She sustained severe injuries from the jet blast and died. So whatever you do, just keep your distance. Today, St. Martin is an autonomous country, although it's anything but independent. It became a constituent member of the Kingdom of the Netherlands in 2010, when the previous country of the Netherlands Antilles was dissolved. 
While St. Martin has considerable local autonomy, the kingdom can and does interfere whenever it considers it to be necessary. Normally though, the kingdom only handles the island's foreign affairs and its defense. The local residents are legally considered to be Dutch nationals and by extension European citizens, but the country itself is not a member of the EU. They can however benefit from the support of this powerful organization, which actually came in handy in recent years, as we'll see in just a few moments. St. Martin is indeed a tropical paradise, but sometimes it can turn into hell on earth. That's because occasionally hurricanes can reach this place, and when they do, they cause utter devastation. Such was the case with Hurricane Irma, that made landfall in September 2017. Casualties weren't high, 4 deaths and 34 injuries, but the island was almost completely destroyed. One third of all buildings were leveled, the rest were badly damaged and 90% of the infrastructure was destroyed. Very soon the people were devoid of all necessities and looting soon became a serious problem. Netherlands however reacted soon and sent hundreds of soldiers and police officers. Five days later, King Willem Alexander had arrived and upon seeing the destruction, called for support from the EU. And despite the fact that St. Martin is not a member of the Union, they received 2 billion euros for immediate disaster relief. While the reconstruction wasn't perfect, it did however put St. Martin back on track, so much so that one year later the country received over 1 million tourists, like nothing ever happened. Lastly, let's talk about the people of St. Martin and what you can expect to find as a tourist here. First of all, you need to understand that this place is a vibrant mixture of African, European and North American cultures. English is the main language spoken here, followed by Spanish and Creole, but Dutch is a second language for many residents. Let's not forget that there's also a sizable French-speaking community too. So, as you can imagine, the entire culture, including the local cuisine, is a unique mixture of all of these cultures and for that alone, St. Martin is already worth a visit. And many people seem to agree with that statement. This country is among the top tourist destinations in the entire Caribbean. As a result, the local economy is almost entirely dependent on tourism. 80% of the people are employed in this sector. So, as a tourist, you'll probably enjoy every second spent here, but don't get too relaxed though. There's a chance you can lose all of your vacation money here, if you're not careful, because St. Martin has more gaming machines per resident than any other country in the world. That means that it's gonna be pretty hard to avoid casinos. So there's that. Please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content. Leave your comments downstairs and don't forget there's a Patreon page where you can support this channel. I hope to see you next time. Bye.